In this video, we're putting together the Space Marine Primaris Chaplain from the Indomitus box set. Hello and welcome back to Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming, where we look at everything 40k, 80 Sigma, Dungeons and Dragons, and a whole bunch more. We're continuing our casual uh, build-along series from the Indomitus box set. In this video, we're looking at the Primaris Chaplain. This is probably one of my favorite models from the whole set, so I'm pretty excited to get this one going. So it's pretty straightforward, there's not many pieces. Um, and actually before I started, I wanted to say a big thank you to people who have left comments on the other videos. Um, I'm gonna use less glue. <laughs> um, I do, I don't like the Citadel glue. Um, I'm gonna get like a little one with a brush eventually, but you know, for now, we're gonna go with this. So, the Chaplain. So there's only a couple of pieces, it's pretty straightforward to put together by the looks of it. So let's get into it. So looking on the G sprue this time, so this is the new sprue, second one. Um, the camera is a bit zoomed in, but that's fine. So there's tons of models on here. This seems to be what's going to be in like the, uh, I guess a starter set or the new start collecting box that will eventually come out at some stage. So the sprue itself has a whole bunch of different things. It has the three you can see the three shields here um, for the blade guard veterans. Let's just turn it around, get a better look. So we've got the shields there, very nice shields, I like them. We have the eradicator unit on this one, so you can see that as well. The blade guard ancient, with those two different bits of body. Part of the judicare, Judic Judic whatever, <laughs> whatever they're called. And then the chaplain bits down here, which is what we're working on today. So. Yeah, this is definitely a uh, push fit sprue, and that's fine. So, you're gonna find them if you orientate the sprue with G down there. Um, we're looking at pieces in the bottom left hand corner down here. So, let's just move some things out of the way and we'll cut them out. So, we need G1, which is located right in the bottom corner down here. So, this is the um, holding up the uh, scepter. So I'll turn that around. I think cutting bits out at the moment is gonna be a bit difficult because I have the camera in a very strange way. So I'm going over the top, if you can actually see. <laughs> and we'll come back and um, yeah, this is difficult. So what I'll do, I'll cut the bits out and then um, we can just chat away. So thanks for watching so far. I've had a whole bunch of people watch there's the first bit, um, the first few videos. So we've got videos for a whole series coming out at some point soon. I think at the moment, scheduling two a day until the whole uh, box set is finished. But yeah, I'm enjoying putting them together. I think these models are, other than like, you know, the new model hype, um, I really do like the models in general. I think they're really well done. Um, very dynamically posed. I think every year the uh, team and the technology for building or designing these models is just getting better and better and better. So I'm always excited. I just really do like these models. Brings in that sort of uh, grim dark that the Primaris were missing. I and mean, that's fine because I do like small grim dark. And uh, particularly this chaplain is, well, it wasn't gonna be hard to top the old Primaris chaplain, to be honest. I was never a fan of that one. But that's not, not an issue, because we got this one now, and we also have the chaplain on black as well coming, which I wanna get. I'm thinking of doing a whole um, outrider detachment because we also have, uh, there's a captain on bike, if you've seen the, I wouldn't say spoiler images, but the press or the promo vision trailer for um, the new codexes. If I remember, I will put a um, link just up in the corner there, a little card, and we can go have a look at that. So you, you can almost do like a full outrider detachment which is gonna be pretty cool so the sprues on these ones again really not bad 
there really nice to get off there's only like two points as far as I can tell because we won't count that one at the bottom as a point and sprue lines or mold lines pretty good you've got that there so we'll just I find with particularly these ones um, on the the undersuit ribbing some on the gun as well on different guns that have like the grip it's better to go with the grain when you are um, working on this, the mold lines, but I'm not gonna go too much at the moment. I can come back later. See, in there, it's better to go, if I can get it in, in shot there, right in there, right in the middle. It's better to go with the grain. Sometimes it's kind of obvious, but it's not too bad. There's a little bit up there, but again, nothing too bad because that angle because we're looking at the model at that angle you don't even really see that line but yes you should get rid of the mold lines there's a few up in there but these ones are always a little bit fiddly to deal with all right so that's that first bit now the front of the body so the head is attached that way and you can see there that how to put it together but we will come back to that in a second so we'll just clean up this and it's I like how the head is done this way. I mean, the fact that the head is amazing, half metal. It's got a half Terminator vibe going on, which is really nice. But you can chop it off if you want to use it for like a grizzled sergeant or a grizzled captain or something. I think that would be really cool. And I'm just tidying up this one here because that is going to slide in to the body and I don't want that sort of getting in the way. So mold lines. It's not too bad. Definitely when you have models that have more detail in them, you can cut the models a lot easier. And I know there's that whole debate between I want to have all separate pieces or push fit models. I, I'm for both, um, simply because with push fit ones, you can have far more dynamic poses instead of having like a modular setup. So, Let's just bring the instructions back. So there's two contact points. Let's bring it up next to each other. Um, two contact points. So you have one in the side there, which appears to be a knife. Oops, appears to be somewhere in that area there, and then one on the neck where the head will slide in. So let's just dry fit that together. Um, really strange. I'm just sort of fiddling around with it just to see. Oh, okay. It was just at a weird angle. I was putting it in sort of flat on, but it's actually an angle. So you can see that it kind of fits together. If we can zoom in, fits together like that. Oops. All right, well, we'll see. We'll put some glue on there. And yeah, thanks to, oh my God, I should have got your name. Um, Painting Rogue, I think it was, who left a few comments. I've had a brief discussion on there about my, um, overzealous use of paint, let's be honest. So, um, so he suggested, or her, don't know, um, just get a little bit out and you just sort of drag it across and even then I think that's a bit too much. And the, the glue should draw itself out anyway, so that's pretty much all you need. Definitely not as much as I have been using. And when I get that in, there we go. So we'll just hold that in there. So you can see that you do have the weird, uh, <laughs> really long neck, but it seems to slot right in. Um, they also gave, so Painting Road also gave this suggestion to me that with the Citadel paint, Citadel paints, the glues, I have always had a problem where it's just dried up completely. Um, and it doesn't come out. Their suggestion was to get a like fire lighter that you use to light like a little gas one, little one that you just pull the trigger on and just run it over there. It might go up a little bit of flames, but just blow it out. Um, but what that will do, that will melt the glue and let it run back into the main bottle. So I did that before I started, it works fine. And yeah, I think that's a really, really good tip. So thank you for that, greatly appreciated. 
so yeah the two tips um, for me was don't push so hard on the glue so it just floods out and you don't need as much glue I kind of knew that and I was just always get a bit overzealous with the glue um, and then use a fire lighter to free it up so there you go so we've got the first bit done now we need second next bit G3 which is the body and bolter Sorry, I was just looking at the image then. This is probably m one of my favorite models from the Primara side of the kit. I love it. I really do. I always love a classic um, Chaplin model. So I'm pretty excited about this one. So G3, which is going to be nearby. I um, just need to find it now. So it's right, right there. So next to the banner. So we'll cut that out. I'm just going to cut it off out of the way. Um, because the camera's in the way. All right, so <clears throat> there is a little knob, a little peg there that you want to hold onto. So be careful not to cut that off. So we'll just uh, trim this little puppy up. So if you have been watching this series, thank you for all the comments. Um, I wanted to do sort of a, I think I've mentioned this before, but just a casual kind of build along. Because, oh, sorry for knocking the camera. Um, doing these videos are, one of my favorite parts of the hobby is putting models together. And I'm not a huge painter, but I know I've had a few requests to do painting videos. And I will, you know what? Wow, I hadn't noticed this. Can you see it? The barrel's been drilled. That's amazing. I'm really happy about that. I'm just looking at this other sprue, the sprue to see if there's any other guns. I can't see any other guns that would do it. Um, but the barrel's been drilled. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. Um, so I don't have to drill the barrel because I always seem to stuff that up. But yeah, that's actually really, really cool. Let's bring that a little closer so you can see it. Yeah. I like it. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, this build along series. Yeah, just, it's casual. Um, I wanted to do a build series sort of in real time, just so you can see any issues that I come across. And if you have seen the, um, or what was it, the Royal Warden? You know, there's problems in that one. And you see what can happen because sometimes the instructions aren't 100% clear. So this one will just slide right in, but what I'll do, and this is a tip that I learned from, oh, Tabletop Minions, I think. Um, Uncle Adam, he was doing push fit ones and suggested that you cut the, um, let's clean that up, cut the pegs, simply because it's a matter of physics, um, where you, don't have space for glue so you just cut it a little bit oh that went flying luckily I've got my glasses on so I'm not gonna lose an eye so yeah, you just cut it a little bit and that gives a little bit of space for the glue there is another way I've seen as well but I'm a bit more hesitant to do that I'll show you in a second all right get that bit out um, I think I saw this on I can't remember the channel very good painting channel but I can't remember the name at the moment they do a series on, they use a lot of oils and things like that. It's really nice, oil paints. You actually cut that and open it up a bit so you've got the glue that goes in there. And it also means you can slide the pegs in a bit easier. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna slide that all the way in. So there's a few contact points that we can paint there. We'll put some glue on. Let's just clean that up. So I've got a little bit there. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a push and then draw the rest out. And probably a little bit there, and just a little bit there. Okay, that's much nicer. And we can slide that in, and there we go. Definitely just clicks in the place. So there we go, we're getting there. Oh, this model is glorious. I'm very excited to paint up. Just the black and that vibrant gold colors on the chaplains are really, really nice. Okay, on to the next bit. So we've put the arm in. Now we need the knee pad. 
So grab the knee pad, the shoulder pad, and then the backpack, and then you're done. So the knee pad is G5. So I'm trying to keep the orientation of the sprue correct, just so we can get it out properly. So G5, I did see it before. Okay, so it's right in the middle, right above where we got the arm before. And G7 as well is the bit that we're going to stick on the backpack, I believe. Yep, that's correct. But we'll get G5 out. And this is the uh, little knee section. So there shouldn't be too much cleanup on this. If you can see from my um, joint fingers, there's a little tiny bit that I just want to slice off a bit. There we go. That's easy. So we can just put a little dab of glue in there. There we go. And this, let's actually get it in view, just slides in. There we go. Easy. That's an easy bit. Oh. Everything started to move around a bit. Okay, the knee is in, perfect. So next we need, we will go G4, which is the shoulder pad. Now G4 is right there, just below the arm. So we've got a spiky thing here. So I've got to say, let's just bring the sprue back in. On this sprue, there are a ton of different bits that you can take and use for different models. So the heads are separate, we've got multiple heads, um, different arms, various different shoulder pads and things. So you even have this section here that you can cut off the knee pad and just use another gun. Um, bits of rubble that you'd be able to, do, to cut the sprue off and put on. Yeah, I think this is a really good sprue. It has a lot of different bits and pieces but we are getting G6 and G7 this time. So G6 is, which part is G6? What's that again? It's the backpack. So, okay, so G6 is down here. I was confused because there was the back of the skull on it, but then we also have this section here, which is the front. So let's get those two bits out. Oops, sorry, knocked the camera. And we'll get the rest of this little sucker out. And I'm finding that on these sprues, the placement of the uh, the sprue channels seems to be a lot better. Um, I definitely think they've improved the technology and the design of the sprues and the mold making. So normally you would have, this one's not a good example, but we can grab this one. So this uh, backpack here, normally, and we have seen it on a few, I think one of the other models. Usually there'll be another channel in that section there, which is always a pain, and sometimes they'll run a channel from there to there. Um, I prefer just that one there. And it just shows that they can do it. So they may as well keep doing that because I think it just makes cleaning up sprues a little bit better. So um, this part, be careful. <laughs> um, you're going to chop the back of the skull off which you should be able to fix up, but. Let's get some files in there, clean that up a bit. That's nice. So there's a little bit of extra bit on here because it was a little bit difficult to cut out. So you don't want to cut any of the spikes off. So just got to be a little bit careful. So this one is a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky. So There's a lot of bits in the way. So you just take a little bit off at a time and try not to cut any of the spikes off. I have a habit of doing that. So I'm a bit heavy handed and it also helps with a sharp blade. So a new blade. <laughs> mm, that might be okay. I oh, know it's a little bit there, but that's why I have, I, I sort of jump between the knife, um, the mold line remover. I find that's really nice just because of the angle. It's a flat angle. And jumping back and forth between different files. Yeah, this one's a little bit more, a little bit extra on there. Okay. So I like this file. 
because you've got a long edge and then a thin edge which is good for flat surfaces also have a round one and I don't have it at my desk but I have a triangle one as well that tapers off to a point so that's really good when you want to get into like, um, corners okay it's not going to be perfect but I can always come back and deal with that later with the triangle one so there is a little bit there that I'm not happy with and you can tell when you, you can put the knife in there and you can feel it or you can run a fingernail over it and you can actually hear it so I think the mic yeah the microphone is definitely picking that up there's a little bits pieces in there but that's okay we can deal with that for now and we have this final little bit for the front of the skull and I'm just going to tidy that up okay that should be fine okay all good so tiny little bit of glue oops keep knocking the camera just a little bit there we go that should be enough and the skull just goes right in so I'm just going to let that sit there for a second so I am a big fan of um, purity seals I just love purity seals and banners I want to give all my sergeants banners <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet but I will get around to figuring that out oh I already did cut it off um, yeah I'm thinking of doing some green stuff tutorials and videos I'm I've done a, you know, a fair bit of green stuff. I um, would say I'm amazing at it, but I want to do some really simple stuff. Like adding in, you know, um, on this doing some green stuff work to add in like chapter symbols and things like that. Not overly difficult. Um, it's just a matter of sitting down and doing it. And I think that would be really nice. Okay, so I'm going to cut this bit just a little bit off. I usually do it at a bit of an angle just so you still have like a full bit just there so it can easily go on and we'll do it from this angle here put the glue in the little hole there there we go that should be enough and that should slide oh sorry I hit the camera that will slide right in easy ah this one's super easy and I'm not going to cut a little bit of the backpack so normally Honestly, if I wasn't just doing this as is, I would keep this separate. And now I regret putting gluing there. <laughs> um, yeah, I regret putting gluing there. And I can't quite get it out. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to go for it. So I'm gonna say I would keep this part separate if you wanna paint, simply because you can see how much stuff gets in the way. But, you know, Live and you learn. Oops. All right, let's put that in straight. Does it look straight? There we go. Okay, and we need a 40 mil base for this one. So 40 mil base. I have my bases over here. So bases here. Um, normally what I'll do, because it doesn't say, you know what they should do? They should say what the size is on the bottom. I don't know why they don't do that. It doesn't make any sense to me. But um, on my um, mat here, I do have um, some a ruler on the on this side and then the bottom side, so we can do that. Right, so, oops. A little bit of glue there, and we put it in like that. Oops, just trying to slide it in, where is it? There we go. And there we have a completed chaplain in, we'll say 24 minutes. I think you could do it faster, but you know, it's fine. So yeah, I recommend keeping the backpack separate. It's not as that bad. You can get access to everything, but I think if you want to get access, cause you can see up in there. I don't know if you can focus too much. I can't tell if that's focused or not, um, but you can see the underside of the backpack and the back of the purity seals and the book as well. But you know, you live and you learn. 
this is I think this is my favourite model in the kit tell me what you think do you think this is what is your favourite do you like this model I th yeah I'm just I'd like the captain one as well like seriously the captain is really cool but together I think they're amazing um, but this model um, the chaplain the pose to me is kind of awesome yeah so yeah um, hopefully you didn't have any problems with that that was actually pretty cool. I'm very happy about the the um, barrel hole being drilled. I think that's really cool. All right, but let's wrap this video up. Um, definitely leave a comment and a like and also subscribe because we have plenty more videos coming out for this entire series. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you later.